This video talks about creating a custom op amp. So we're going to go in here and grab op amp. So there's a whole bunch of op amps, but sometimes your op amp isn't in there and you just want to make a simple op amp. So they have these universal op amps and up here it says what all is including. We're going to use the universal op amp too because it includes the slew rate, output voltage, and current limits. So we're going to place this right here. And so we come in here and we can look at, if you right click, you can kind of see these parameters. So we're going to build up an op amp based on this MCP6001, which is a, you see it's a low voltage op amp. So we're going to come in here and add in these parameters. So the first one is we're trying to find the open circuit voltage. So here is the DC open circuit voltage right here, which has a min value of 88 dB. So we have to convert the dB into linear units. We're going to go 10 raised to the 88 divided by 20. So this is 25,000. So we're going to come in here and we're going to change this to 25K. The next one is the gain bandwidth product. So we look for the gain bandwidth product. So here is the gain bandwidth product, and you see right here that it is one megahertz. So we're going to go in and put one meg in here. The next one is the slew rate. So here is the slew rate. This is in volts per microsecond. So and to put it into LT spice, we want it volts per second. So this is 0.6 times 10 to the 6. So we're going to put in 0 0.6 meg. The next one here is the current limit. So here is the short circuit current. We're going to be doing low voltage, so we're going to put in 6 milliamps. The next one is the rail, and so that's the distance away from the voltage for the maximum voltage swing, and you see that it is by 25 millivolts. So we're going to come in here and call the rail 25 millivolts. The last one that we're going to put in is this offset voltage. Here is the offset voltage and so we're just going to use it kind of ranges from minus 4.5 up to 4.5 millivolts so we're just going to put in the minus 4.5 millivolts. Okay, so now we want to come in here and we want to build our op amp circuit to check all of these parameters. So the first thing that we have here is a positive and negative rail. We're basically doing a low voltage, so like a 3.3 volt supply. So we're breaking this up into a, minus, a plus 1.65 and a minus 1.65. So the first thing we're going to do is come over here and we're going to power our op amp. Okay, and then we're going to add on some resistors. Add in a voltage source. We're going to make this a sinusoidal source to start off. Okay, and then we're going to wire this up. We're making a non-inverting configuration. Okay, so here's our non-inverting configuration. And we're going to start with a gain of 10. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, we're always going to do uh, 
negative feedback, so we're not going to worry about this one. We're going to start with the gain bandwidth product. So in order to find the frequency response, we're going to come in here and add in a small signal. So we're going to put in an amplitude of 1, so everything's just going to be in straight dB. Okay, so then we're going to simulate, do an AC analysis by decade, 100 points per decade. We're going to start at 1K and go up to 1 meg because we have a gain bandwidth product of 1 megahertz. And so we run this, look at the output. We, at this point, don't care about the plot in the phase. So we're going to add in two cursors, move one down here into the flat section, and then this one we're looking at this change. So we're going to minus 3 dB. So you see this is 98, so this is about 100 kilohertz. You see we have a gain of 10, which is this 20 dB. So the gain of 10, and so 10 times 100, so that is a gain bandwidth product of 1 meg. So if we were to come in here, change this to a gain now of 100, and rerun it, do the same thing, you can kind of see that now it's 10 kilohertz, so you see that that gain bandwidth product is determines how much bandwidth we get for particular gains. Okay, so now let's go into the next one. Now we want to look at slew rate. So if we look up here, here is slew rate. So what slew rate is showing is that the input changes quickly, that it takes a while for the voltage to change. So the problem with measuring the slew rate is sometimes slew rate get, gets mixed in with that bandwidth in terms of frequency. So we're only after voltage change. So in order to limit the gain bandwidth product, we're going to change this down to a lower gain. So we're just going to go to a gain of 2. We want to change this into a pulse, so we're going to come in here and change this to a pulse. We're going to start at 0 and go up to half a volt, so that way when we have our gain of 2, it's going to go up to a volt. We want no delay, we want a fast rise time, so we'll put in 1 nanosecond. And then this is going to be 0.6 volts per microsecond, so we want it to be on for a couple of microseconds. So let's just do two microseconds like that. Okay, so now we're going to come in here, simulate. We're going to change this to a transient. We're doing four microseconds, so let's do a couple of periods. So we'll put 12 microseconds. Okay, so then we run this and we look at our output compared to our input. And so you see there's a little bit of roll because of the frequency, but it's very linear at the beginning. So we're going to come in here and look at the slope of this. So we're going to put one cursor right at the beginning another cursor right here in this linear section, and you see that we get a slope of 571,000. We put in a slew rate of 600,000, so it's pretty close right there. So that is the slew rate. Okay, so now we're going to look at the current limit. So when we look at current limit, we that's how much current the uh, op amp could put out. So we're going to go back to our sine wave that we had before. We don't really need this anymore. Okay, and then we're going to put in a resistor right here and look at that limit. So you see it has a limit of 6 milli, we're putting out a gain of 2, so we're putting out 1 volt, 100 ohms. So now we're going to run this, go back to our 
three periods because we're back to the one kilohertz. So what we see here is it's trying to put out a sine wave, but it can't put out a sine wave because this is limiting and it's limiting it to to the six milliamps. Now we were running a little high. next thing we want to look at is the rail and so then that's basically how high the voltage goes so let's get rid of this current limit problem let's go back to our gain of 10 okay so now we have rails of 1.65 volts and it should be 25 millivolts close to that and so this op amp goes pretty close to the rails so we want to be a gain of 10, so we want to put in a amplitude of, let's just put in 0.2 volts. So 0.2 times 10, that should take us up to 2 volts. And you see that once it starts to clip, it does weird things it doesn't like to clip but you can see that it doesn't get up to the 1.65 it only gets up to the 1.62 if we took this back down to 0.15 you see then it works fine because we're not hitting that top rail okay let's look at the last one which is the offset voltage okay so let's go back down to of a volt. Okay, so what we see here is we're putting in 0.2 volts peak to peak. This has a gain of 10. So you see we're at the like the 2 volts peak to peak. But if you look at this, the top one is at 1.7 and the bottom, oh wait, here it is. The one is at 0.9 and one is at minus one for the output here. So you see here that it isn't centered in the middle. And the reason that it isn't centered is because there is an offset voltage on it. And we have an offset of 0.45. So if I look right here, you can see that the average voltage is 45 millivolts and that's because negative 45 millivolts because it has a gain of 10 and there's an offset of 4.5 millivolts times the 10 so that's that 45 millivolts so this whole thing is shifted down because of that negative DC voltage and that is the offset voltage and then to finish up you see that is all of the parameters that we do so let's just review those really quick so this is the open circuit voltage. This is how much bandwidth you get for a certain gain. This is how fast the voltage can change as a function of time. This one, the gain bandwidth product is more for bandwidth and frequency. Smaller signals, the slew rate is usually a problem when we're running slower but larger voltages. This is how much current it can put out. This is how close you can get to the plus and minus power supply voltage to the op amp and then this V offset is a DC offset in the input.
So to get slew rate, slew rate is how fast voltages change as a function.